Hello, welcome back. Um, with morphing, the and you know, as is the case with um, moving something around on pegs, you can just move that keyframe, uh, one of the keyframes, uh, forward or back to retime the animation. Um, as you saw with pegs, or you may have seen with pegs in the very first series, uh, which was the intro to Animate Two, um, you can move a, a key uh, a keyframe from of a peg which is a movement layer, you move a keyframe forward or back and it makes the animation faster or slower. Um, and that's the same with morphing. These two drawings that I've done, once the morph is applied, I can move those keyframes closer together, as I'm doing here, um, and the morph updates or further apart, um, and the morph automatically just interpolates between those two keyframes, no matter how far away they are, uh, apart they are. Um, I can remove a morph by selecting any morphing frames, even just a small section of them, and I can uh, right click and choose morphing, delete morphing, um, and there the morph's gone. Or I can, um, when I'm applying the morph, um, instead of in the first, in the first, uh, in the previous video, I selected a, all of the frames in the um, in the first drawing, um, I can just select a smaller section of frames, press Alt M again, and there I've only morphed those few frames. And because it, when I remove the morphing, you can see that it removed the hints, and so we've got that old tangle back. But now you know how to get rid of that. Um, so I'll just uh, undo that till we've got the morph back. Now that another cool thing is to um, to be able to uh, remove the morph and um, convert it to individual drawings so you can then you know do whatever you want with those but there are a few there are a few um, reasons why you might convert something to uh, convert a morph to individual drawings um, it gives you more control over the actual artwork and things like that um, if for example if I go to this frame here I can't do anything to it because it's part of a morphing sequence but um, uh, I can convert all of these to single drawings so that I can do stuff like, you know, use the contour editor to, to fatten parts of it on individual drawings. So what I'll do, I'll do that now. Um, it's very easy to do. I just select all the frames and right click and go morphing and then convert morphing to drawings. And as you'll see, I'll enter the base name. Um, I have to give it a, a kind of name so that it knows in the X sheet what to name all those drawings. I'll just call it Smoke and go OK. And there we go, it's converted it to single frames. Now I can retime individual frames. I can select individual frames and manipulate them however I like. Um, and and it still moves the way we wanted it to move. The, the thing is, the difference here is that there are no hints. Um, present, so you can't change the way it moves once you've um, converted it to drawings. You could always you know, start again either by undoing all the converted drawings um, or deleting them um, and starting again with your, your two uh, keyframes. But that's just a really cool level of control, nice level of control if you want it. Um, before we um, wrap up, summarize, uh, I just want to mention something about Animate Pro 2. Um, there is a, a something called um, uh, if you select the morphing tool and go to tool properties there's uh, morphing layers so you can make a, a morph more complex than than you would normally by adding layers to the morph uh, without la adding extra layers to the timeline so the example that they give in the um, in the Toon Boom help file for morphing, uh, for morphing layers, is that uh, is you can have an owl body and have his wings on separate morphing layers, so they morph uh, differently to one another and to the body if the body does morph, um, and then um, that doesn't appear on the timeline as layers, so it tidies everything up and keeps everything uh, kind of neat. So on this um, smoke example, I could have. Um, an extra level of smoke. You know, when you, when you see um, uh, cigarette smoke or incense smoke, you, you sometimes have a um, couple of layers, a couple of tendrils overlapping one another. Well, that'd be a really cool effect to try with this. And um, 
I haven't done it here and I don't have time to go into it now but I'll, I might um, do an advanced morphing um, video series a bit later and uh, and yeah that's that's one thing that I'll try to do um, so in summary um, morphing is best when it done uh, works best when it's kept simple uh, you can retime it and convert things to drawings um, and uh, I'll, one thing I better mention before we go is that uh, you one of the rules of morphing is that you can't morph from one color to another because colors are, are managed in a very specific way in, um, in Toon Boom you can't morph between two colors. Now what you can do on the other hand which isn't mentioned in, the, in uh, any of the Toon Boom documentation in the Animate Pro documentation or Animate documentation is um, let me just uh, delete that. Well, I'll make it invisible. I'm going to create a rectangle. Boink. Uh, now, I have a gradient here, and this is really, uh, really cool. I'm going to manipulate this gradient. Just make it um, like that. Now, I'm going to create a second keyframe of this gradient. So I've got one drawing here and another drawing there and in the second drawing I'm going to move the gradient up to here so if I morph that gradient alt M what I've got is a gradual change of, of the gradient now you can you can um, in your morph in your gradient morph uh, I don't know why this isn't I'll just remove that morph actually because I can't change the gradient while it's morphed for some reason um, Maybe in the final version of Animate Pro, which will be out very soon, uh, you will be able to do that. But I can um, squash and skew and, and mess about with this gradient, rotate it a bit, so that when I apply the morph, all this cool stuff is uh, is morphed. So there we go. Now this this is really interesting because um, it, it allows you to do something like a sunset or a sunrise or something. Uh, but like I said, you can't change the color uh, over time. So you can't go from a purple sunset to a um, to a to a blue sky or a blue sky to a purple sunset. Um, you would need to uh, add all those effects in, uh, you know, with um, effects modules. Um, so to play us out, I'm going to show you. Um, I laid some effects while you weren't looking. I laid some effects down onto the smoke. So I'll just play that and I'll see you later. Hope you like this one. Next one I'll do a camera tutorial. Come on, open. What's going on? Here we go. Goodbye. Oh, that's lovely. Loop. Mmm, lots of effects. Nice. See you later.